So I was like, what's going on? So he sat me down. I was like, so, um, you know, we're having difficulties finding an actor. So yeah, I heard, yeah, the actor is like, no one fits his look. I said, yeah, but you know, he was saying that you look like the kind of guy that fits his look. I said, oh, cool. So have you found anyone look like me? I said, no, we haven't. I said, oh, cool. <laughs> and I was like, so we were wondering, we were wondering, uh, what you do it? I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll do it. I was like, you would, you would. I said, yeah, I'll do it. I was like, I mean, you pay me, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, let's go, you know. Okay, everyone, welcome to the season finale of the Chris Hansen Conversation. It's been a great three months. And uh, right now for my season finale, I, I, I told myself I got to get someone really different, really special, really someone that really piques my curiosity. And I have him at CCB TV right now. And, you know, the reason I'm back with my cap as per the old days I know, not very often have I been wearing the cap and I've been having my own hair just to prove to the rest of the damn planet is that that I still do have hair. Um, but today, because I tried looking for my afro and I was in doubt that I could find my afro wig. So in absence, when in doubt of your afro, put on the dough. So I've got the dough in my head because I've got a guy next to me who's got an absolute afro on his head, and he is none other than Afro Ben. Welcome to the show. Hey, sorry, just making sure I put it on properly. <laughs> all right, it's all stable. Wait, 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 fall off. Yeah. wait, 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 wait. Before, before I begin, before yes. I begin, I am so freaking curious, man. I'm gonna reach out. Yes. I'm gonna reach out. First time is always free, yeah. yeah. Holy shit balls is real. <laughs> it's all real, man. All real synthetic from Spotlight. Well, no, I'm just kidding. No, it's yeah, all natural, it, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. And this is where, you know, I've been waiting, I've been waiting for so long to ask you this question. Yes, sir. On camera. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask you that question right now. You mm -hmm. see, I'm going to, I'm going to throw out a couple of, a couple of images right now. Can we have the first one, please? Booms. No, 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 Booms. not that one. Booms. Oh, I think I one, two, three, and four. Something's gonna come up. Something's gonna come one, up. One, two, three, and four. Don't scare me. Ah, uh, see, that's one. <laughs> <laughs> that's one. There you go. That's one. Hey, that's my and cousin. Can, <laughs> can we have a second one, please? And there you go. And can yep. we have the third one, please? And there you well, go. Yeah. And can we have the last one, please? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, why are you showing on my family photos? Uh, hang on, uh, yeah, that's what I want to know. Now. There is one dissimilarity versus the obvious similarity. Uh, yes. Right? Uh -huh. They're all black, dude. Uh huh, yeah. You're not. I ain't a black dude, yeah. Yeah, I but how the fuck did that happen in your <laughs> head, man? So, uh, long version, a uh, long, uh, sorry, short version is I'm Eurasian. Just like you. So am I. Yeah, I don't have an like afro. You. We are the good stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have the good stuff. Huh? Yeah, all, all <laughs> the different good stuff. It's just that my, I happen to You're have... You're going to make a lot of Eurasians very happy for yeah, just for hey, saying that. Come on, Eurasians represent. Come on, guys. <laughs> you know, minorities. You know. <laughs> hey, Sandra Gallison, you got to listen to this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. You want Eurasian rules, huh? Yeah, hey, Eurasian okay. rules, man. Come on. <laughs> so only Eurasian can do this. Huh? Look Chinese, right? But have African hair. <laughs> And then when you, when you say Eurasian, ah, okay, can you suddenly we got the pass, you know? <laughs> yeah, so I'm Eurasian. Yeah. Um, my known mixes, right, mm. are Irish, right, Dutch, right, Indonesian, okay, Malay, and Chinese. Dude, it doesn't spell Afro in any way. Does it not? got this a mix, man. <laughs> come on. Okay, so okay, yeah. So then, where does the hair come from? My great grandmother on my dad's side, who was Dutch Indo. Uh, she had this hair from the Indonesian, her Indonesian heritage. Have you seen any uh, one of those, your r relations or relatives from there, that do they have hair like yours? Um, so my grandfather mm -hmm. has this hair, my dad has curly hair, and mm -hmm. I have curly hair. Okay, this is where, this is where, you, okay, okay, you just hold on to that thought. This is where I'm going to put up this picture of you when you were a kid. Let's go. I'm like, I'm like thinking, how do you find, ah, so cute. That one. Who's the boy? Yeah, but look at your hair then. Explain yes. that. Okay, so this uh, this is a phenomenon, right? When my hair, <laughs> when I was young, when I was young, all right, my oh. hair. <laughs> when I was young, my hair was straight. Okay, then during puberty, let's just say more than one part curled, lah. Okay, more <laughs> different heads. More than one head decided to curl. Okay, so. Oh, come yeah, on. You're not yeah. joking. You're saying joking. that yes. at puberty, yes. besides other things happening yes. to your body, yes. 
the hair in your head yes. became an afro. Yeah, my no the the texture of my hair changed when I um, was in my 13, 14 years old. Okay, okay, okay. Wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. I want to yeah. catch you out on that. Yeah, yeah. Can we have the other one, please? Uh, the one with him without the afro. Uh, that's definitely me without the afro. Words. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that, man. Poor guys. <laughs> the, my poor producer is fighting the image. Okay, but this is the way. It's all jokes and laughter here. No, no, not that one, man. That uh, yes, one. Yes. Yeah, please pull that one out. Explain yes. that shit but to can me. You, but can you... Okay, look at this. Look, can you see the texture? All right, compared to my dude, young photo. Dude, it looks like any guy. Any Eurasian guy. Yeah, see, compare this here. Compare this. Right? Yeah, yeah see, okay. See, so the texture of my hair changed. Right. It would be a bit rougher like it, it sticks up it's, you see it started growing upwards instead of downwards and little did I know that growing that out longer this new texture it would be this so okay For when you then. when you ex- you experimented to see well, whether or not it became an okay. afro it would no, become no, so an afro it was an unexpected experimentation so I went to polytechnic after secondary school yeah after St. Pat's right I went to poly and I was like hey mom you know after polytechnic in three years I got to go military service right right so this is my chance to grow out my hair for fun you know a phase in my life but when you were in St. Patrick's school and when you were in polytechnic did you have an afro no no it was the, the picture it was that one yeah, yeah yeah so you only discovered did you discover later then that you could have an afro yeah so can you imagine it was a slow phase it was a slow process sorry you know because like, it was a weekend so, so this is the best part okay I started growing out my hair um starting from January of my when I was 17 years old January right yeah and I told my mom can I grow she said okay fine okay. fine I get, let, me, let you grow face in your life blah, blah blah okay so I thought I was going to grow out my hair to this emo face okay like all my other Chinese friends right they all like emo hair and everything what do you mean by emo hair no, no. I'm 53 years old man you got to explain that okay, to me okay so, so you know uh, for those of you who know that during like maybe 20 years no not 20 years maybe 15 years ago there was this emo phase where all people everyone was growing long hair that was covering their eyes that's called the emo phase yeah it's like hair where the fuck was I living eyes. man then yeah <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck yeah yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Your emo yeah. phase yeah so it's emo meaning um, so it's where the hair covers your eyes yeah. it, it covers your ears yeah. and your neck but it's, it's not curly it's generally straight and wavy right and so a lot of polytechnic kids were doing that and then they're always going around flicking their hair because they can't oh, see. Oh, those. You know? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Those guys. Okay. So I thought I was going to grow my hair to right. that face for fun, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. But, you know, every week, so I, 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 I saw my church friends once a week, right? And every week they'll be asking me, Ben, something's happening to you every week. Your hair is not growing downwards. <laughs> it's trying to enter back into you you know it's like curling backwards so like, is he afraid of the world <laughs> then I'm like guys I don't know I guess I have curly hair you know and every week it just became every week it was like an update with my friends every week just, oh my gosh Ben you are, it's really updating and then I remember midway through I was like mom do you notice this it's like oh yeah but your dad has curly hair too I said oh but I never knew I had curly hair from dad I said yeah he always had curly hair I think there's a fundamental difference okay I mean let's talk about this there's a fundamental difference between a dude with curls and a dude with an afro you evidently have an afro yeah so I there are people with curly hair and curly hair you know but this is not just about curly hair, man. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. like a this is like a bush. It's out of control. You know, I, I wish I actually had given you the the the, the, the monthly <laughs> process so you can see, right? So <laughs> after I realized I had curly hair, I was like, you know what? Let's see how far this can go. <laughs> okay. And I don't think you have it, but I have a picture of me of the longest my hair has ever gotten. And that I, I swear it should be in the history books, man. Okay, okay. How okay. how how big was it? I can't say how okay, long. Do you, you want to see it? It's how big. I have it here now. You, you, you can show it to me. Okay. We can put it in post right. later on. Okay, okay. I'm gonna show it. We'll to put you. it in post. It's easier to show it to you than explain it because it's very. I trust me. It's it's so hard to explain it actually. Hey, okay, Kai. We put this up in post later on. Yeah. Are you ready? So this, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, uh, this is the this is the longest my hair has ever gotten. Okay. Holy shit balls, dude. <laughs> Man, this has got to go up, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Holy yeah. shit, balls. This is absolutely up, ridiculous. Yes. Can you imagine? I had... No, like, this uh, is like... Yeah. Oh, this reminds me of Motley Crue. Yeah, I, no, I was slashed for three Halloweens in a row, man. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if you can see a bit. Maybe. Can you see that? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, it's going to come up. We're going to yeah, put it up anyways. See, see, you you just, can, even, even if it's so small now, you can just see... It's... the 80% of the photo is hair, so... <laughs> You send it to me. Send it to me later. I'll put, yes. it, all, I'll put it up for everyone yeah, to see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you did put this up. Anyways, uh, you put it up uh, on the uh, Smiling Afro, yes. which is your business, right? Mm-hmm. I have an Afro. I'm Asian. 
I make videos. Yes, sir. This one of so this is the reason why I want to start with your Afro first, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And then I'm curious because you are Asian and you have that Afro, which which is so accidental to you. Yes, it right? was an accidental thing. It was never like a oh, I knew I always could grow. So okay, when you discovered that yes. you could have an Afro as big as the one you've got, yes, yeah, yes. Did you at that point think that it could become a brand? Um, no. Right. Okay. So long story short of how I came out with the the nickname, right. Smiling Afro. Right. So I guess I mean when we were young, we were, um, you know in the I was in the creative scene and I was ah, looking for what's a good nickname, what's a good name instead of just you know Benjamin Byrne, right? It's right. Like, I want to come up with a name that's related to like who I am and so Afro. Uh, the Afro changed my life, right? The moment I grew out my hair, everyone around me reacted differently. It changed. Yep. It changed my life. Yeah. I was like, oh, the Afro Ben. Just the Afro guy, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. So people yeah. started calling you Afro Ben. Yeah, Afro Ben or Afro guy, mm-hmm. or the Afro guy, you know, uh, in Thompson, you know. Yes, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> sir. yeah. Because you know, uh, and I, I liked it. Uh, you know, um, and the, the funny thing is, many people was like, "Oh, are you upset that people keep calling you that?" I'm like, "No, but it's who I am. I love it. You know, it's who I am." And because it, growing up, I really love to make people laugh. You know, I love doing comedy. And when I see people on the streets and they see me, they mm-hmm. smile. Mm-hmm. They're amused, and I was like, you know what? This is a great, um, what's the word? But a great thing, I, I they, a great, they, they, uh, a, uh, an, a, I, not an item, but no, it's a great asset, asset, right? That th- so you saw this as an asset. You didn't, yeah. You didn't, you weren't, weren't bothered by it. Yeah, so it was a great asset to my character already. Uh-huh. Uh In my journey in this life, to make people laugh, right? And that's I was great. Like, that's this great. Is, this is great, and I want it, and it is who I am. It's natural, so it's it is me. Mm. And I wanted to my my nickname to have something to do with the Afro, definitely. Yeah. What do you What do you have to do to maintain that 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 thing in your head, man? Well, so <laughs> no having a good barber, yeah, yeah, to help me cut in a shape that I like to, so it, it looks like your a fro, barber yeah. must have nightmares, dude. Every time you walk uh, into the shop. Well, I, I've gone through many barbers to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, some just don't make the cut, pun intended. But yeah, so uh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, so like a good barber is important, right? right? right. Someone who's not afraid to tackle this. Okay, to be fair, right. it frightens a lot of people. I've seen a lot. So, funny story. Um, a lot of barbers forget that there's a mirror in front of me. Mm-hmm. So when I sit down, and then you know their reactions, they're like, and I'm like, oh no, I can see all that. I say, please don't touch my hair anymore. <laughs> you say yeah. it's not just the hairstyle. Hmm. So what else? Oh, it's me. It's me. It's in all the personality. You know, it's all in the personality. Yeah, so we like got, you got you because you know what? I, this this caught my attention uh-huh. when you I saw I found this. I, of course, I did my research research hey. on you. Hey. Can we put this up, please? So it's oh, not no, just this? a hairstyle. <laughs> oh, is that my LinkedIn? Ah, yes. <laughs> not your LinkedIn one. No, not oh, that no, not one. This, okay. It's, oh yeah, that's whoa, the this one. Is, this is a uh, wow. Her, yeah, my, my Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, your Facebook. It's yeah. not just a hairstyle. So what more? What more? What more is it to? You, mm-hmm. other than your hairstyle, we know you like to make people laugh. Is yeah. there anything else you want to add? Well, I, I, I'm gonna be a bit arrogant and say that I don't think anyone else in Singapore has my kind of humor in the or like is uh, uh other another creator in Singapore that's doing the kind of humor I'm doing. Wow, that's ballsy. Yeah, man. Okay. I don't know. That's why I. I that's why no, I'll say it because that's 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 my opinion when I when I when I create content I look around like no one is really almost close to me but I say I would say Mal- a lot of Malaysians I notice have the same kind of style mm-hmm. but not many Singaporeans yet okay and so that's why I say I'm it's, I'm unique to myself right? so let's yeah. talk about that foray into the media world mm-hmm. I, it's it's a certain definite that uh, that you are in the media world you were from St. Patrick's School alright dude all right, only yeah. the best people come out protest from them, revolt man. Man. protest and revolt oh. yeah <laughs> Um, <laughs> my goodness, I'm gonna get screwed for that. Um, <laughs> and after St. Patrick's, oh. you you headed to still the same thing, man. La Salle again. You oh, went okay. to La Salle College of the Arts. Oh yeah. Man. I just had one guy last week uh-huh. uh, for my show. Yeah. Um, and Wesley, Wesley Aruzu, lecturer oh, at La Salle. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. film. Nah. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah. And so you went there. What did you do there? I did film. Oh shucks! Yeah, and you did. And you, and I think it's bef- after my time. Yeah. Oh okay. Yeah, <laughs> I look older than I am. Yeah. Asian blessing. Yeah, yeah. You look older <laughs> than you are. Younger than you are. I I look older. 
<laughs> sorry, I look younger than yeah, I see. see I'm sorry. See, I had to correct you. Yeah, I'm doing you a favor. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so you went to La Salle. You, you studied film. Yes. Okay, and is there a specific reason why film? Well, um, I've always loved acting growing up, right? And I didn't think I would actually do it. Uh, want to do it as a career, but mm. when I was in polytechnic. And when I started growing out my hair, I was like, you know what, my life is changing so much and I really want to do acting. But, you know, my parents were like, no. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. my mom convinced me to do film because she said that filmmaking, I'll learn many more different uh, aspects, different departments and I have a lot of more skill sets after that coming was out that of school. The, was that the right advice? That's what best advice, one of the best advice my mom has ever given me in my career. Because I... I you know, I know I do filmmaking now. I know so many aspects, and I do all the. Dif- I mean, I, I have skills in all different departments. Mm-hmm. And it's helped me a lot in my own business, right? Mm. And yeah, so that's why I did filmmaking, and okay. I, but I ended up enjoying filmmaking a little bit more than acting. Mm-hmm. So most of my life has been doing film. Yeah. So you, so after you left La Salle, yeah, you went to the film world. Yes, in doing internships, doing uh, mm-hmm. as a production assistant or being in production, right. production management. Yeah. And then how did you come to this part, to this point? Well, so um, I was doing internship. Mm-hmm. So, I, so after La Salle, I went to the military. Mm-hmm. And then I I went, I went, came out and I was doing internships, right? Right. And there was one project for KitKat that my company that I was interning at was, uh, I was working for. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't find a suitable actor or talent right but I was in the production office you know serving coffee to everybody and then the director looked at me and he looked at the producer and was like why don't you ask Ben he has that look but and I didn't hear it but what I didn't know uh, is that they, everyone in the office thought that I wouldn't do it mm-hmm. but they really wanted me to do it but they didn't think if I would say yes so my producer came my boss actually came to me to have coffee he said Ben let's have coffee it's like sure so I was like, what's going on? He sat me down. I was like, so, um, you know, we're having difficulties finding an actor. I said, yeah, I heard. Yeah, the actor is like, no one fits his look. I said, yeah. But, you know, he was saying that you look like the kind of guy that fits his look. I said, oh, cool. So have you found anyone who looked like me? I said, no, we haven't. I said, oh, cool. And he was like, <laughs> so we were wondering, we were wondering, uh, what you do it? I was like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll do it. I was like, you would, you would? I said, yeah, I'll do it. I was like, I mean, you pay me. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay, let's go. You know? And so from then on, that kind of started my so-called uh, journey appearing in front of camera on like advertising. So that was your first my time first in front, time. you know, doing something like this. Yeah, like in right. corporate sense, right? Right. And like Kit Kat, you know, branded. Mm-hmm. And I met a lot of the, the, the agency people and the crew and they were all like, hey, you know, you should do more of this. Okay. And so that started the ball rolling. Okay. And started ball rolling. But I went back to school. So uh, after doing, after internship, I still went back to school to mm. do my degree in filmmaking back in La Salle. Mm. And because I just wanted to get a degree and I came out, I did my master's for a year in London. Wow, you did a master's in filmmaking? Mm-hmm. Holy shit balls, dude. And also, I wanted to go to London because I wanted to break into the industry. Right. And so after filmmaking, I actually I actually love advertising more. And also that's where the money is, right? So Usually, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So And I love advertising because there's more chances to do comedy in advertising because funny advertisements tend to hit, right? Yeah. And I was like, hey, this is my, my avenue where I can... Like a typical, like, like yeah. a typical Thai, yeah, exactly, Thai exactly. marketing, exactly. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I really wanted to be part of that. And in England, then the English sense of humor, yeah, the British sense of humor is there. Dry, so yeah. I was trying mm. to get into that market, but right. um, Brexit happened, and I couldn't get a job in London. Okay. So I came back home, right? And I've always wanted to start my channel. So I, 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 from since I was seventeen years old, I made funny videos for fun. Okay. Just for fun, you know, maybe people laugh. I, I don't care. You know, I, use, I, I would use, use my own money, spend, do videos, and then, um, but I always had a fear of starting my own channel because okay. you know it's putting your face out there, right? Yeah. The whole world to see. Yeah. But I channeled my disappointment in not being able to get a job in London mm-hmm. to finally conquer that fear and say, "Fuck it, screw it, Ben. What are you doing? You have the skills, you have the talent. Start the damn channel. Stop making excuses." So I started my channel in 2018 when I came back from England right. and I also applied for advertising jobs. Right. So I told everyone, I announced, I said, hey guys, I finally have a channel. You can find content here absolutely free. It's for fun. I just enjoy doing it. At the same time, I'm looking for a job advertising to, to you know be an advertising rock star one day. Mm. And this channel is just for fun, pure entertainment. But two days later, I received an email from my first client for The Smiling Afro. They were like, hey, we've been following you for a while. You're quite a funny guy, you know. We like your style. We saw that you launched your channel. So are you available to work together? And I was like, 
Whoa, wait, 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 wait. What the heck? It's two days, man. Two days. Two days. And how many followers did you have in just those two days? A hundred followers from his family and friends. <laughs> <laughs> and then still, you got, you got yeah, some. Yeah. So yeah. it's ba- so I can dare say it's based completely on on people loving your content. Yep. On these guys, the client who called you up. Yeah. So Mm-mm. the the client called me up. They just they recommended from by a friend of mine. And right. And then they were watching my normal channel i'm normal like instagram page okay even before i started my channel right just watching my normal stuff for fun and they really just enjoyed my character Mm -hmm. but they didn't know what i was doing in life so they didn't know if i was available to work with them but when they saw my launch of a hey this is a uh content creation channel like oh so this guy he okay so he does it like for a living maybe and Mm -hmm. so i was like okay yeah sure let's talk and they became my first client and one thing led to another and i realized Gosh, people need to know that I do not work for them. They are just a uh, client. Yeah. Right. So I said, it's great, guys. I'm 27. I'm going to start my own company. You know, I, so I started Smiling Afro, Private Limited, and I said, I announced to everyone, guys, I'm my own man. I'm open to work with anyone. So when you started at 27, as a real young age. Mm-hmm. And at 27, you started that business. And how, how many years has it been, Smiling five, Afro? Five years. Oh, congratulations. As, uh, incorporated, five years. Congratulations! I see this proud look on his face, and rightly so. Hey, rightly so. So, so we can say that it was kind of deliberate for you starting your channel, and then it was kind of accidental, also just much as just as much as your afro is accidental, right? Uh, (laughs) Most um, of my life would be accidents. That you, yeah, that you, you probably felt compelled to start your or incorporate your own business, right? Because a first client came around. And that was like a kind of an indicator for you to. It was a big blessing, honestly. Big okay. blessing, yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, y- the tagline for the Smiling Afro, yes. and I mentioned it earlier when we started mm-hmm. the show, when in doubt, go with the fro. Can you tell us, how do you, how do you come up with that, man? Was it just because it was catchy? Uh, so, I've always liked the phrase, go with the fro, mm-hmm. because it's, the play, it's a play on go with the flow, right? And I'm like, go with the flow go with the fro so I uh-huh. like to go with the fro but I was trying to look for what, an extra line to it's like for clients or I know I know so it's, you're trying to be punny yeah so I was like <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly so I was like I, I can't just say go with the fro right so I was like when do you when do I want people to go with the fro when, when you're in doubt, doubt. ah mm. clever fella la. but but then again it's also when in doubt go with the flow anyways right, right? so typical sin fads boy boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> so would you call yourself an influencer no. Why the fuck not, bro? Because I haven't taken a picture of my backside Tanjung Beach Club yet. Okay, so I, <laughs> <laughs> I have not reached star status of influencer rating. Okay? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Rewind, rewind. What? That's this one I gotta know. How the fuck? It was the best what part. Has got, it was the best part. What is has God showing your butt? Guys, you need to hear this. So the best part is that I met Mr. Chris Hansen at Tanjung Beach Club, by the way. So... <laughs> <laughs> but I was not showing my back. No, no, you won't. You won't. It'll be a different beach. evening, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so that's the reason why you said that, what you said. Uh. <laughs> but, yeah. but everybody tells me, mm. even before I met you, everyone yes. tells me, Afro Ben. Oh, who's he? You, you got to pardon me, man, because no, I come no, from a different not. generation, no, right? Yeah. So I, gotta f- I, I, I go find out, you know, who's he? Then they tell me this guy, this guy is this big fucked up afro man. <laughs> and I go, oh okay. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, so does he have a big bone in his nose? <laughs> does he call himself umfufu or something? <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm just kidding. I'm just no disrespect. No, no, um, no jokes here. Yeah. Then after which, um, and they tell me he's an influencer. Look, man, the rest of the world. We well, gotta say world. I mean, at least known world to me. Know you as an influencer. So are you going to deny the fact that you are one? So I will forever deny because <laughs> I do not like that word. Why don't you like you that know? word? Tell me. Because, okay, to me, the influencer word is such a, a strong word, you know. Mm-hmm. The Pope is an influencer. The president of most countries, presidents of most countries are influencers. Right. You know, for a period of time, Ellen DeGeneres, Oprah Winfrey, these to me are influencers because they are people who have inspired many and continue to inspire and they have the power to inspire. Okay. Right? Um, I understand that the word influencer came from because you have a following, so you have the ability to influence people's decisions when brands, you know, like a brand mm-hmm. comes to them and say, okay, please influence your fans' uh, decisions on like buying our product. So you're saying that the, the term, the choice term of influencer should not be a choice term to be used to define people who got yeah, followers. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't like it. If but, you were given yeah. an opportunity, I'm yes. sorry, because, yes. you know, 
old brain. Uh, no, is it? I tend to lose. I'm about to lose my train of thought. See, here we go. Where was I going? This. Um, <laughs> if you had yes. the power, yes, to influence <laughs> a change in that choice term definition, yeah, of the word influencer, what would you call these people? And of course, inadvertently, call yourself. Um, so right now, I call myself, and I am a content creator. Okay, because I create content for which living. is what every influencer says about themselves. Yes, which I which I'll say, I disagree that they should. Many of them call themselves content creator because, like, for me, mm-hmm. when I I started my channel as with a business mind, right? Right. Because everything happened, I said, okay, I'm going to look at it from a business point of view. Meaning, mm-hmm. I have to, I have all, I'm constantly cre- trying to create things of value for clients to see and for clients to feel. Okay, this guy is of value to us. Or he'll be valuable to us. Okay. So that's where I'm constantly writing. I'm 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 editing, creating stuff, right? Yeah. But you know, so I just say, but a lot of influencers are pretty face who got famous from a pretty face. May right. not look at it as a business point of view. Right. Had a lot of following and on OnlyFans and all that. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> right? Who knows? One day I see. One day you might be an OnlyFans. Yeah. When when <laughs> tough times, right? <laughs> desperate times, desperate, desperate measures, guys. But yeah, you know. So. <laughs> So yeah, so a lot of these influencers, I, I guess they create content, open inverted commas, by taking pictures and everything, right? To me, that's not really content, right? Because mm-hmm. it's easy. Mm-hmm. You don't, they don't have to, there's no creative process. Okay. Like a deep creative process and of value to clients. Okay, okay. let's talk about your yeah. creative process then yes. because I've been watching your videos and there's some funny ones Thank you. like your funny Thank job you. interviews. Hey. And, hey. <laughs> and uh, yeah, quite funny. Yeah. But you did one in my most favorite person. Oh, really? The guy with long hair. Jesus. <laughs> I was for, a moment, for, for a moment, I was like, I have no friends with... Ah, my best friend, Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got to say, I got to say, I mean, okay, okay, it's kind of creative, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and though I, I laughed, yeah. Yeah. squeamishly, <laughs> um, I felt a little uncomfortable though no, no, don't get me wrong. I'm yeah. okay with it. I'm not going to yeah. go up in arms over this. Yeah, I'm not crazy that way. Mm-hmm, yeah. Mm-hmm. But I want to ask you, man, how do you feel when you were doing this? Are you Christian? Oh, I'm born and raised Catholic, yeah. Ah, you and I, same, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So when you did something like this, yeah. did, you, did you feel awkward? No. Why? Um. So, okay, when I, if I, anything I create uh, is because I see the humor in it. Right. Okay, I'm not. I'm not yeah. judging you. No, Don't no, get me no, wrong. No, I just really just want to understand. I actually, your, I actually okay. know which video you're talking about because I've gotten questions from a few people about. Oh, it. you did? Were you? Yeah. Uh, like, this is why I wanted to ask you. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So they, they felt because they felt uncomfortable. Right, right, right. They but most of them felt uncomfortable for me that I worried for me like you okay is it people are gonna like blah 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 you know but I say, um, I would say in 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 all the religions in the world I think Catholics right we have the best sense of humor. Because we are always made fun of okay. by other religions, we're always laughed at by okay. Christians, by any other religion. They let to make fun of us because of, let's just say the the loss happenings for the past hundred years that didn't really help our case. Okay, <laughs> yeah. But what I feel, I always felt as a Catholic right. that growing up, I had a great sense of humor with all the religious people in the church. And I feel that a lot of priests have a great sense of humor. Yes, actually. And I think it's because somehow deep in our hearts, we just know that Jesus Christ has a great sense of humor too. I think so too. Yes. So that's why when I when I create any joke uh, with Christ involved, mm. there is still a line I, line I draw. There's right. certain things I will not do because even I will say this offensive. You know, like that's like, yeah. Yep. Um, but I, I feel whatever content you see with Christ involved and in the future that I have some already in like the the, the world. In the bag, like, huh? Yeah, uh. yeah. And I know, I already know one or two people are going like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, which, uh, yeah, you know, it's coming. But, <laughs> but, 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 I, 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 I want, Knowing you, ex empath boy, uh-huh. Asian guy, you, you, your sense of humor level, I know it's the same as mine. You will see it, you feel comfortable, but you will also say, you know what? But I understand that humor. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm not up in arms about uh, it because yeah. I understand the humor, mm. and I've always been one to say, you know, that Jesus Christ, speaking old language, old man language, <laughs> Jesus is groovy. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I think he's groovy. I mean, come on, humor. Speaking for those who, who who really have an issue with this or take issue with what you've yeah. done, yeah. humor comes from the big man. Yeah, right. it comes in the big man, and it'd be great that if we have that kind of humor. And same thing when you do your English or Singlish vids. 
I'm pretty sure you get some backlash a little bit from some little anal retentive part of society. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, no, they, so because... Tell me about You it. know, you've seen my singlish videos, right? Yes, yes. And honestly, <coughs> tell me, tell me, do you, have you ever felt like I was insulting our language? No. Right? No. It was, it's, in fact, I love the language so much yeah. that I'm just putting it on video and as Singaporeans, we're like, hey, yeah, that's what we do and that's where the humor comes from. And I think, I yeah. think, I think, you know, I mean, I don't know if you heard, man. I, I mentioned this uh, a couple of episodes ago with someone. That the, Eng- that the sing- singlish is our former Creole, right? Yes. I mean, it's like when you go to Brooklyn, you have Creole from the yeah. people of Brooklyn. Yeah. You go to Queens, you got the same thing. All from New- but they're all from New York, right? Mm-hmm. We have our own Creole. This is street slang. But, and, and in the US, they actually hold courses, paid courses for Americans who want to learn singlish. Amazing. They Amazing. love it. They actually Amazing. love Singlish because yeah. it's so short form, man. Yes. Like what you did for this video, the one that we just showed just now, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. The word can. Yes. In Singapore, it's so powerful. It just cuts out a lot. It's I love a that powerful one. Powerful word, right? I love yeah. that one. I love that yeah. bit. So, yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. And you know, surprisingly, also, I, I just a shout out to uh, Dr. Gui Li Sui. Hey. Doctor Gui, what's up, man? You know him too. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, look, man, the guy's a got a got a. Got, he's a doctor in English, right? Yeah. But he, I think, is is the guy when it comes to the Singlish, yes, man. The man. Exactly. The, the so, doctor. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, um, I I really think that there's nothing wrong with it, but I just abhor the fact that you know some some portions of society actually go also go apeshit crazy over oh why are you speaking in singlish yeah i think if there's anything that we can call ourselves singaporeans about is singlish yeah for sure yeah right yeah um, the only reason why i'm refraining quite a lot from you know for my shows is yes. because the rest of the world has got to understand yeah. what i'm talking about Fair enough. you know yeah Fair so enough. that's the reason yeah. why uh, but if i can break out in which i do every now and then you know to me singlish is the easiest way to communicate that's what that's what I feel that is beautiful about Singaporeans. Yeah. Right? That yeah. we can choose yeah. when to code switch yeah. from like English right. to Singlish. Right. And I think that's okay. And and that's what makes us Singaporeans. Yeah, see, you know what's sad, I don't know if you've heard this, maybe you're kinda young to know this. Uh, <laughs> remember the guy with the hair almost like yours but with yellow wellies? Yellow wellies? Yellow boots, yellow wellies. Oh, 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 sorry. Wellies, so dude. I, I mean, fuck me. I mean, it's, I mean, I'm sorry, that, I never am I that wellies old? in my life. I dude, those are called wellies. wellies my... Wellington. Yeah, yeah. Yellow boots, yellow boots. Yellow boots, <laughs> yellow wellington. Yellow wellies. Okay. Yeah. Of so, course, how to forget? He's my uncle, right? So, yeah. You know, fuck people, off. People have called me... <laughs> PCK hey, since Gurmit. growing up, okay? Hey, Gurmit. People you got to check this one out, man. The next time you put on those yellow wellies and you put on that wig of yours, you pull this man into your show. Um, <laughs> I've had Gurmit before in my last nice. podcast. Yeah, he's a great guy. Real great, great guy. Yeah. But I, 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 but it really reminded me, you know, of a little bit of yes. that. But when at that time, when they started, you go watch my episode for that show. Um, <laughs> when I spoke with Gurmit. You know, at that time, when PCK was really hot, right? Yeah. In Singapore, before he gone off to Malaysia, mm. uh, JB. Um, um, it had some backlash. The very oh, fact I that remember. he's speaking the way he does. I remember. Right? Oh, you do? Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I think, I, I think that was a real sore point for us, you know, because why? Why do that? You know, I, I, this is who we are. And we should never shun away from the fact of who we are, right? I mean, this is how we. This is how it's truly like. Yes. But what do we want? We are. Are we afraid that we're going to have our kids um, not speaking right? Um, well, yeah. I mean, I teach. Uh, I have to. You know, I have to also face that challenge. I teach voice, and it comes. Of course, the language comes with it, right? Um, but it's still, I don't think it's that much of a big issue. We should keep our identity as Singaporeans because we're so freaking unique. Exactly. It's like un- knowing exactly. a guy who's Jamaican, right? And what's his street slang? Creole. Yep. Right? Don't say reggae. Fuck, it's not a Creole. <laughs> Harry Belafonte, you know right? what I'm saying? Right. The, f- banana, s- the banana boat song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and at the end of it all, right, I think we should take a little bit of pride in singlish and i applaud you for that i love those clips man yeah it's freaking yeah. brilliant but like but as you, you know, just to, just on your point there's i think there's two two parts of society that yeah. upset one is the don't speak singlish yeah so disgusting it makes us look disgusting yeah which i'm like wow I'm so, I, f- I feel sad for them because they're so like disgusted with 
Yeah. The, you know, the, the language yeah. that was grown here by itself. By no one created it. It happened. Right? Yeah. And that's beautiful. And the other side where they don't understand humor, uh-huh. so they think all my videos, I'm trying to insult Singlish. So yeah, these people were like, stop insulting the language. Oh, I'm that's like, some, that's I'm like, something that is so freaking extreme, man. Insult Singlish? Level. I'm like, do you not watch or do you not understand the video? I, I'm speaking Singlish. I love it. Oh, I'll, God. I, I'm not insulting. I'm oh, like, man. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, what? what? <laughs> and on that note, on that note, since we're on the topic of Singlish, man, yes. you know, I, when I saw the, when I was asking myself, I said, you know, I got to be a nice host because I got this guy coming, right? And, 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 I got to give him something to eat, you know, at least some something to bite, right? Mm-hmm. And for some reason, when I thought you're Afro, I somehow think Uncle Kwe. I don't know why. So yeah. you know, don't don't be shy. Okay, I got some Uncle Kwe for you. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> somehow, go for it. Go for it, man. I got to... tissues for you too, in case it's so nice you cry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so. Well, now you pressure me. I have to cry. <laughs> if not, he's gonna be offended. Like, hey, you, want nice, to, uh. you want to be an actor? <laughs> then be an actor, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, hey, you know something? Since you're eating something red, I'm gonna ask you about something red. Okay. You are a Man United fan. Oh yes, sir. One more time, man. One more fist time. Fist bump, Let's bro. Oh man. Right, man. GGMU, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and all the scousers will hate my guts for saying, but just bringing this up, man. But I don't give a flying shit. Um, okay. <laughs> Um, I love that that video you did <laughs> over the ayam brand roast. Oh, the ayam need ayam brand. Yeah, ayam. I know all the ayam brand fans. Hello. Any ayam brand fans? Ayam. Pong 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 Boasting about that, you know, the uh, <laughs> seven kosong cup. <laughs> yep. yep. <laughs> <coughs> I won't. I won't give them too much pleasure just because I'm. I'm talking about this, you know, on this show. <laughs> but that video you did, man, mm-hmm. I enjoyed that one thoroughly. And I'm gonna do do this um, on right after the show. I'm gonna put down that link <laughs> to that Facebook reel that Afro Ben did <laughs> on his page. I tell you, all the Man United fans, you gotta go watch that. And I dare any scouser who <laughs> to go watch that too. You know what's the best part? The video works all the more now that we are we really secure. Exactly, top man. And Liverpool secure, not top four. Eight. Exactly, so. man. <laughs> exactly, man. I mean, I mean, I remember when the season started, <laughs> mm. and they said, "I mean, what Europa League? What's that? What's Europa League? Hey, yeah, I mean, exactly. what's, what's that, man? What's Europa League, man? You know, mm-hmm, I mean, mm-hmm. we'll see you from up there, you know, from the Champions League, yeah, you know. All these people. Well, you know what goes around." Comes around, karma's a bitch, man. It's Met a her a few times, and she's not very nice. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> so you met you met York and Cole recently. Oh yeah, man. I had a. How did that happen, man? How do you get that 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 cushy ah. gig, man? Okay, so yeah, I know I'm friends with the Shivas community. Not sorry, not the community. Shivas brand. <laughs> <laughs> you're friends with Shiv with the Shivas brand, and you are you also friends with Shivas Shivas, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You like to take shivers? shivers? Like you take shivers. I I mean if it's available I drink. Okay. Yeah. I like to take I Johnny like for a long walk. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> if you consider that walking after all uh, <laughs> you know it'd be more of like a Johnny stumble, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, am I gonna get flamed for this? I'm bringing up booze on the show. Right. Ah, uh, it's your show, who cares? So yeah. Well, yeah, so a lot yeah. of people might care. Mm. Yeah. So I yeah, mm-hmm. so I'm friends with Shivers uh, right. and um and when they um, when they became a big sponsor of uh, Manchester United, right. they found out I love Manchester United. Yeah. So they started inviting me for all the Shivas menu events. And um, so this opportunity came out mm-hmm. for me to just host the meet and greet right. uh, in You're collaboration lucky, with Harry's. Lucky bastard. And I was like, sure, <laughs> you know, why not? Why not? Bloody hell. And uh, it was fun. Fuck it, I hate you. Legend, man. Right? I freaking hate you, man. <laughs> Part of your hell. Please, please go and tell the, the organizers uh, to do something about that crazy queue mm? and the oh long entrance. But that wasn't by Shivas, though. Oh, okay, good. Mm. I'm glad that to hear that. That was by the main ads, like with Singapore, uh, Sentosa. So, holy crap! You don't know what the crap we had to go through to get. Yeah, I'm so sad. I wanted to see you there, man. I, I made a, I made, I made a conscious decision because I was there with my young boy. Mm-hmm. And the the queue was crazy, and it was storming, mm-hmm. and we were literally breathing other people's carbon dioxide. So, and and you know, six o'clock they were supposed to open the gate. I'm saying the Sentosa Development Corporation. I hope you're listening, mm-hmm. and they didn't. 
And we waited and we waited and I made a decision. I said, no, for the sake and safety of both my kid and myself, I said, we got to get out. Fair as much fair as I would have loved to have at least seen, let alone speak with York and Cole, um, I, well, you know, I had to make a choice. I had to make a decision. <laughs> yeah. So let me ask you, five years into the Smiling Afro. Yes, sir. And uh, what are your, what are your, there must be some kind of objective you have in mind. What are your plans, man? Can you share that with us? Well, basically, I'm growing my brand, right? The right. plan is always to grow my brand bigger. And the bigger I get, I want to have a team. Okay. And eventually become a mini agency. Don't you have a team agency. now? Yes, but they're all freelancers. Right. So they work uh, be on a case by case. Hey, Kai, you hear that, Kai? I love you too, man. Love you. I love you deep, deep, Kai. <laughs> I love you too, Kai. Maybe not as deep, but yeah, you know. <laughs> That's, Kai, is, Kai is my video editor, producer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I mean, really, I mean, wow. Love you a long time. So, <laughs> shall we? <laughs> love you a long time. Hi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Kai. Uh-huh. Thank and you, Kai. So, my, my, my dream is to have a, become a mini agency production house uh, and create strictly funny, right. quirky content. Okay. So, like, basically... Short dream, form, short form, quirky content. Yeah, and my dream is to basically create Thai advertisements, like, in terms of the style. Wow. Right, sorry, not, not Thai advertisements, uh, in English, sorry. Yeah, so yeah. So, advertisements... <laughs> in but style. that kind of that the, kind yes. of guerrilla marketing yes. style, yeah? yeah. And I want, yeah. yeah. So I want the brand to right. be like known for. But do that. you think? Do you think the Singapore marketplace is ready for something like this? Because I look around and I see MNCs, so many not doing things like that mm. in Singapore. So that's it's as if they're damn scared. They're, no, they are. It, no, they are. They right? are. See, uh, I think being in the industry for a while, yeah, a lot of clients say they want to make a Thai ad style, but the moment. <laughs> in the conceptualization stage, from the first draft to the last draft, it all becomes the knees start knocking. It becomes the same old typical Singaporean advertisement. Safe. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So my dream is to make a company and because since I'm I, 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 I run a business, so I'm I'll be the one that's very strict with But don't you so. think that uh if there's going to be any opportunity for those kind of ads, it will come out of Singapore. It won't be in Singapore. It won't be from Singapore, likely, right? Not many, anyway. Yeah, but I believe there's a lot of companies out there who are willing. You do to, to take that leap of faith. Maybe the maybe the SMEs. Yeah, but yeah. So my plan is to maybe work with them first, and mm-hmm. then eventually, when people, a little typical, right? People need to see the results. Mm-hmm. And eventually, one day, the dream is that a lot of companies say, "Oh, it actually works." Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's try it. Well, don't guy, you think you, know? you said the word safe, and I and I cannot disagree with you more. I mean, look at my show. You know, my show is it's not really that safe because simply because I say it as it is. You know, and <laughs> and a lot of people get really shocked at the fact. Uh, you know, and and I don't like the typical political correctness and the typical show me your questions first before I agree to come on your show. I say if you if that's the case, don't come on my show. Um, I don't like to plan things. Um, too much anyway I've got to at least have a Mm-mm. sort of, of a course. guideline yep. of yep. where I'm going to go with this yep. right but a lot of people would find stuff like what I do and what you do to be really outside of the parameters that they feel that they're allowed mm-hmm. you know um, how do you think that could change well <clears throat> I think that for society to change their idea is going to take a very, very long time because what we have become. So you're boiling this down mm. to something societal. Mm. You're not boiling it down to say maybe corporate governance. Yeah, it's, 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 it's because of how we've been governed. Yeah. Right? The rules and regulations okay. that has made the country right. feel this way from years and years. It's been years and years, right? Well, 50 years of this kind of like Oh, you cannot do this. You cannot do that. You know, or not, you will be punished. Everyone so, feels so this. Yeah, what you you're saying is that we are we are t- of being tightly regulated. Yes. Okay. So, and that's why, and that's why I feel that sometimes when I do a funny video, mm-hmm. a lot of first reactions is, "Haha!" But uh, you can say that. Uh, oh, is that, it okay? Yeah, that's the thing. Okay, but in in other countries, it's like yeah, they don't really ask that anymore. You know, I I mean, now maybe more because the woke generation, right? But mm. but, <laughs> in, yeah, but in general, less overseas, right? But in Singapore, it's always. So hard to do comedy because people will ask questions for. Are you okay to say that? Yeah, that's the thing. Mm. You know, it's so funny when you see people like uh, 
Not that I think he's great. <laughs> uh, he's all right. Russell Peters, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I love the Brit com- com- uh, comedians, though. They're freaking funny. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. Jimmy Carr and all. Mm-hmm. But look at, look at how... Okay, let's take a look at the UK then. Yeah. Let's forget about Russell Peters. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's, let's take a look at the UK. We've got guys like uh, Mickey Flanagan, mm-hmm. right? I love him. Uh, Jimmy Carr, right? Um, Michael McIntyre, mm-hmm. right? And most of the Brit comedians from the UK... Be free with what they say, right? And the audiences, the typical local UK audience, would really laugh their hearts out and they would accept what's been... Because we, they laugh at themselves. Yep. Now, when I look back, Singaporeans had the ability... Yes, past tense, I believe. Had I believe past so. tense. Mm-hmm. The ability to laugh at ourselves. Hence, yeah. when we, what we spoke about earlier, when we look at PCK, right? It became a hit because everyone found it relatable. Then after that, it had to be watered down. Mm. And then it kind of lost its color, its flair. Um, but then, we've, then I've realized, I've noticed, for myself in my opinion, I've realized as the years went by, audiences then became cynical. Um, and then they start to poo-poo things, you know, like, you know. Um, uh, yo, yo, this guy, you know, and they start making yeah. judgments, they start stereotyping. How do you see that? Yeah, exactly. Yo. You know, and, and, and we've lost that bit of ourselves where we are able to accept things readily and laugh at ourselves. I agree. Yeah. And, and, but the Brits, they're brilliant at that. You know, they, they really know how to laugh at themselves and even laugh at each other. I mean, you can have an Irish guy going up there and crack Irish jokes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, huh? <laughs> yep. Right? <laughs> Look at the chat shows. Graham Norton, yep. my favorite oh. guy. Oh, I love, love Graham, Graham Norton, man. I love him. Jeremy Ross. I mean, despite the fact oh. that he cannot pronounce his R's, you know, but, <laughs> but even that, you look at the way they do it. It's so free. Everything's so free. The way the, the way they are, so how open they are, you know. This uh, it's it's and people don't judge that. Yeah, I'm sure there will be segments of uh, in, in 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 their society that would feel the same way as a lot of people in our society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we've got a lot more of those cynics here now, <laughs> <laughs> don't we? Yes. So I don't know. You know. I mean, don't get me wrong, man. I love those gorilla ads. I yeah. love them. Yeah. But whether or not. There's going to be a ready a ready market for yeah. that is something yeah. else, right? I mean, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't know. You but know? that's why I love that challenge. You know, yeah. I think my whole life has always been about being different. But it's a dream, life. isn't it? Just it's to have dream. Singapore yeah. change, Singaporeans, the Singapore, the Singapore audience, yeah. just be able to laugh again. Yeah, so really funny laugh. that you mentioned that. So I remember growing up, right, mm. uh, watching Gotcha. <laughs> you know, hey, like, Moa, oh, shout out to you, yeah. man. Gotcha, yeah, man. Yeah. And so the other day I was scrolling TikTok like a month ago and people were posting old videos of Gotcha. Mm. And I was looking and so they were just pranking Singaporeans on the streets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and I was happy yeah. because you should see the reactions. They all were generally quite, ah, yeah, you, why are you what were those me? I think that was in the 90s. Early, late 90s. Yeah, late 90s. Yeah, late yeah. 90s, yeah. And people, I love that because people's reactions, you see the Singaporean reaction, were very genuinely, they were like, oh, they know it's, it's fun. It's all in the name of fun. So they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah why are you like that? Are you yeah, like yeah. That? But now I can imagine doing the same thing and so many Singaporeans right. writing in yeah. uh, on the spot. Why are you, why are you, why are you, why are you, why are you? Yeah. You know, and it's so sad that our society yeah. became. I mean, look so at, old. look at, you look at, look at, uh, Back way back then in the early nineties, there was a place in Boogies called the Boom Boom Room. Oh yes, I've heard about the Boom Boom. Yeah, you've heard about it, but yeah, you've not been there. Been, yeah. Can young. you imagine? My mother felt that it was such a treat every time we took her to Boom Boom Room. That's so nice. And oh my goodness, they make fun of her too, <laughs> Kuma. Yeah, and and that was a that was an a, a period where we could really laugh at each other and laugh at ourselves, you know? Um, that was, that was the, to me, the height of, of where we took comedy entertainment, you know, and when, when Boom Boom Room existed. And my goodness, just to get a seat, a table or a seat even in that small little place was quite a feat, you know? And yeah, man, it was it was quite something, man. I mean, I, I, I look back and I remember all this very, very fondly. I look at it today with what comedy clubs and stuff, and I go, oh. "Yeah, can't, it's not because of the comedians, not the acts, man. right? 
It's not my yes. axe. Is it no. safe? Can I, can I, is it safe for me to say that? See, boom, boom, boom. Had still had a bit had had Singaporean flavor. Yes. Uh, when you come in, when in there, you know, this is a Singaporean place. I'm yeah. Singaporean. I'm here. Yep. And this is Singaporean. Yeah. But now when you go comedy clubs, it feels like this is American concept. With people trying, with Singaporean people yeah. trying to be um, using, trying to be American yeah. in terms of the concept of comedy entertainment. Right. Yeah. Yes. In terms of the whole production. Yes. It's stand-up comedy a la Saturday, Saturday Night Live, you know, as opposed to how original it was when you have had guys like Kuma and the rest of the team on Boom Boom Room, and how they write their stuff and how they get their stuff going. Man, it's all really from ground up, man. It, it's it's not about mirroring someone else or something else it was original i love it yeah yeah it was it was a great days man i mean if when if you were older then you would have loved it really yeah sometimes i wish i i lived through to see a lot of the the old singapore in the 90s you know oh yeah yeah i mean you kind of missed out quite a bit believe me <laughs> not just the 90s man even the 80s right i've had you know my my last episode prior to this one yeah right the one we just aired the week before that one i had the old uh the well Oh, old is wrong. I'm so sorry, guys. I won't call old. The experience. I won't call you old. I promise. I'm so sorry. I'm the not going to call you old. The experience. I had Jason Shahu and Anne Hussein on my show from Gingerbread, from the old Ooh, band Gingerbread. Wow. But you, that one, you're really too young to know. Yep. You know, and and it was so good just listening to Jason and Anne talk about that year, that era back when even when I was too, I'm, I'm I'm too young for that even. You know, I, I of course I followed them since I was 14 years old, but. Um, the stories I had to hear I said my goodness even before my day it was so much fun man so much fun <sighs> Singapore is vibrant uh, in, in terms of the entertainment in terms of the music you know everything was just wow you know yeah yeah so so I, I gotta say man I really hope I wish you the best I hope whatever plans you've got you know will really pan out for you thank you, you know, you're a nice guy thank and, you uh, thank you and, and okay so Afro Ben is not an influencer. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> the non-influencer. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes I always feel influencers. Could you please leave the MC arena? Because you're not meant to be MCs. Hey, so true. I, I've got my thoughts, man. <laughs> I've got my thoughts on that too, man. Really? Yeah. I mean, like you're. Oh, you're only being asked the host because you have a lot of followers, but you're not actually a host. You know. Thank you. There's, you know, skills involved, man. Thank you Stage so presence. very much. Stage presence, yeah. knowing what to say, the voice. Yeah. You know, some of them go up there, it's just like, and they do a job where anyone can do, just read off a script, yeah. right? Influencers are not MCs, so I really hope the companies out there will stop that bullshit yeah. because they can't do what MCs can do. But they hope people mm-hmm. come because so-and-so is being an MC, you know what I mean? It's exactly, like, oh, yeah. The people who come here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolute rubbish, and they, they produce rubbish at the end of the day. <laughs> Yeah, but anyway, I just want to say this. Uh, be sure to follow The Smiling Afro in Thank Facebook. You. Thank you for And that. please also follow CCB TV in Facebook. My, his Afro is so say, big, say, he gets noticed say. more than I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> equally important, please subscribe to CCB TV Podcasts for more of the Chris Hansen Conversation in YouTube and catch all of our shows there. I'm also on Spotify. Google Podcasts, uh, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, and the list can go on. But you can find me for audio as well. I hope you had a great time watching the Chris Hansen Conversation here from CCB TV Studios. Um, I'll be back. Won't be long, but we're going to take a break, maybe in about two months, okay, for season two of CHC. And no, it's not the church. Hey, I'll see you guys soon. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hello? Good morning, bro! It's 7! What? AM! Ah, right. Yeah, because last night, 7 0. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. mm. I'm hungry. Can I order 7 kosong, please? Ah, oh, 7 kosong. Pata. You want pata? Okay, I'll make for you. I'll make for you. Where are you sitting? Huh? W- where are you sitting? Which table are you sitting? I sent to you. Which table? Oh, right, right, yeah. You like to sit in the middle, right? So the table in the middle, right? Yeah, I send to you, ah. <laughs> 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 mm.